Now we're on to example three for measurement errors and this one's quite unique and this is specifically when you know what the error is. Okay, so we'll quickly discuss uh, this packet of chips here. Now this is Smith's chips, I like Smith's chips and on the packet it says 45 grams. Okay, now the 45 grams is actually what you call your the measured value okay because that's what Smith's chips have measured the weight as or they've said it's 45 grams but I'm telling you right now I've used let's just say I've used some special measuring instrument and it says that it's actually 45.2 grams so we're going to call this the actual value this is what it really weighs out as okay now, if we were to talk about lower and upper bounds like we mentioned earlier, I'll do this in green because when you know what the error is, you don't actually do this, but we'll, we'll just do it as a little side note. So if we talk about the upper bound, that would be 45.5 grams because it could be anywhere up to that weight. Or if we were to talk about the lower bound, that would be 44.5 grams. So the weight could be anywhere between that and they would still measure it and say this is 45 grams. Now if we look at um, what we mentioned earlier, um, I think it's called the absolute error. Yes, absolute error. We would normally say, okay, the absolute error is uh, 0 0.5 grams with a plus or minus at the beginning because it could be anywhere, it could be 0 0.5 grams above or below that. Now, when we know what the error is, the absolute error changes. Because we look at these two numbers we have, the absolute error is actually 0.2 grams. Because we, um, our measured value was 0.2 grams below what it actually is. So the absolute error is found, using this formula, measured value minus actual value. So 45 grams minus 45.2 grams, which comes out as negative 0.2 grams because um, it was measured 0.2 grams below what it actually was. Now to be perfectly honest when you do these questions you really don't need to put a negative or a positive in it. Okay. Um, let's move on to question B which is our relative error and as we mentioned to do your relative error you go 0.2 above you put your absolute error above and below you put your uh, measured value I believe. Actually I'm, I'm going to pause for a second. All right, I just had to double check what I was saying here. So uh, at the bottom of the fraction actually goes the 45, the measured value goes there, the, the value that they are saying it is, okay, not the actual value. Anyway, so the relative error is plus or minus that and you just divide it which is 0.2 Actually, I'm, I'm just realizing I shouldn't say plus or minus because we actually know what the error is and we know that the error is a negative. It was 0.2 below um, what, what it actually should have been. So I'm going to correct that and say that my relative error is not plus or minus. It's just negative. And it's 0.2 divide um, 40, 45. And to four decimal places, that'd be negative 0 0.0044. Okay. And the percentage will be the same thing, negative 0.2 over 45, except they times it by 100. And to two decimal places, this would be negative 0.44%. Uh, just pointing out, when they do the answers in the textbooks, textbook, I've noticed they really haven't worried about whether it's negative or positive. Just as a little side note. 